Hey people, Thursday the 29th, we're rolling towards the end of the year. Still wearing my God in Shirts uh, Tibetan Monk sweatshirt. Kind of um, to roll out the rest of the holidays with the uh, red festive color. It just kind of works out that way. Cheers. I'm just going to yak at you about... Um, Music and junk this morning, okay. Um, yeah, this is this is fun, and this is a real um, connection. You folks aren't li sitting here in the room with me, but when I'm in the room with you, even though I'm not there physically, I am. Am I not? Because you can feel me, can't you? As always, I want to say hello. And sending much love to my family, my sisters, my nephews, my great nephews, anyone else that I'm related to that might watch this. Hello to you, all of you, all of you friends who've been here for a while, for a long time. Um, Gorbo, hello. You know, I forget to say hello to people sometimes, but um, much love to all of you. Kind of going to bounce around. Got a couple of things to share. Uh, just thinking about music and um, the importance of um, it as a focus in in life for for some of us. And it's a it's a lifesaver. It is a lifesaver. So to jump into um, yesterday. It was a lazy day. Um, still, I'm on a waiting list for um, um, water heater repair, so I'm I'm dealing with that just fine. <laughs> I'm done with worse. I've been homeless twice, so I know about taking care of myself and dealing with things when you don't have what you're supposed to have. So I'm all right. Thank you. Among other things, yesterday I saw that the Ronnie James Dio documentary was put online to watch for free, and I wanted to—I wanted to see it. I, I like documentaries; it was—it's good. It's a good documentary, and you know, uh, as I was watching it and taking it all in, I was happy to say that, yeah, I knew it. I knew that he was important. I could tell. I was part of that. I was part, I was in the audience that caught that wave of in the 80s when metal was God. I've seen Dio three times. I saw him twice in the Dio band on the uh, the two tours, the one with the dragon, which was awesome, and the one before it. And he was amazing both times. He commanded his presence in spite of his shortness, his just like Prince, he was larger than life in that voice. I like Dio so much that I can't play it here, but back in the 80s, I made a, I recorded my own cover of We Rock because I liked the song so much and it's such a great riff. And the way it starts off is just, you know, you know the way it builds up. Fantastic. I've also seen I've also seen him in Black Sabbath as well as Ozzy Black Sabbath. I'm glad that I got to see the um, what's it the Mob Rules tour, whichever one it was, with Vinny on drums, and um, that was the first time I saw Black Sabbath. So for a while I was thinking, well, I didn't haven't seen Ozzy. I finally saw Ozzy, and um, it was wonderful to see except for Bill Ward, the original Black Sabbath. But uh, Ronnie James Dio tore it up, you know, as far as what he can do with his voice and his stage presence. So I really enjoyed that. I don't have any Ronnie James Dio records, none. I've, I've never never bought any. Um, I liked him. Did I ever buy a Dio album? No, no, never did. Um, just never... Uh, Never needed to. In the 
the um, documentary as well as some others I've watched recently because I love watching documentaries. I watched recent some punk documentaries on um, the exploited and the um, the whole anti-Nazi um, uh, movement in England. But in the deal and in some other um, videos, people have talked about the importance of the regions of heavy metal and hard rock music. And people keep bringing up Deep Purple. And I have to agree. Recently, someone asked me in the comments, because I was talking about old rock and roll, and they asked me, well, what about The Who? Well, you know, I like The Who. But The Who always, to me, were kind of like just these laddie, laddie, laddish. Kind of like kids in the neighborhood that I might play with sometime, but they're not my favorites. I had several Who albums, including Quadrophenia and Tommy. And just over the years, I got rid of them because I don't play them. Not so with Deep Purple. And I still remember when I first heard Hush by Deep Purple. Just like I remember the first time I heard Born to be Wild, Steppenwolf. I, I associate those songs with that time period and the beginnings of heavy, heavier music. Just like Blue Cheer and Summertime Blues. I was all over it. So this is an important album for me personally. Not just the hard rock part of it, but the progressive rock part of it as well. I have a purple vinyl reissue of it. What's the name of it? When they would play it on the radio, I would stop. Is it The Shield? It's it's one of the tracks on here. I forget titles, people, over the years. You know, that's, that's age for you. But it's an instrumental that equally um, features Richie Blackmore and John Lord, and it's just great. I was recently watching a um, documentary, let me look up and see the uh, title of it, with Michael Caine talking about um, the 60s, and uh, I just watched a book, yeah, My Generation, if you haven't watched it, BBC, I like the way BBC does their um, documentaries, and then I just finished watching one on Chuck Berry, okay, um, I'll try to remember to get to some comments on that, but um, never got to see Deep Purple, you know, I think they came to Omaha once in the early days and I did, didn't have the money, but I love Deep Purple, and I, I have hung on to several of their albums, I love this. When it first came out, I got a free copy of it as a promo, white label promo. I don't have it anymore because I destroyed it playing it so much. But I thought from the very beginning, because I was already oriented to classical music, that this was a good effort, that it was good. This is a monster album. Deep Purple and Rock. A very appropriate cover, Mount Rushmore. This is fantastic. Speed King. Come on. Yeah, this is some of the heaviest. I agree with, 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 what, with what Ronnie James Dio said. He and his friends thought that Deep Purple were the heaviest. Many people thought so. Much heavier than Led Zeppelin, and I agree. Much heavier than Led Zeppelin. I, I haven't played these in a while, but I do pull them and play them. This is a, a, an um, exemplary live album. Deep Purple made in Japan. Have you really listened to this? The excitement, the um, the band was just like invincible. This is incredible. Ian Gillen's voice, okay. Deep Purple, seriously, this is a band. This is one of the greatest bands. Yeah, I, I rate you know, the British, the the original British wave with the Beatles, Stones, Dave Clark Five, The Who, The Animals. I love all that stuff. But like I say, um, you know, I probably rate Dave Clark Five a little bit higher than The Who for me personally, okay? When David Coverdale joined the band, this is Deep Purple Live in London, and they're still good. And I was also blown away when Tommy Bolin was in the band for a while, you know, because Tommy is from Sioux City just up the road, and I met Tommy, you know, hung out with him when I was a kid. Great guy. Another great album, Fireball. 
I no longer have Machine Head. I bought it as a kid. Proudly bought it and wore it out. And that's why I don't have it, because I played it to death. I just, you know, I played it to death. But Fireball is another one where I really like this when it came out. Hard Driving. Things are changing on this album. I still like them. Burn. Deep Purple, okay. And then 24 Karat Purple, okay. Know what I like. I know what I like. Cheers. Seemingly I'm unrelated, but but not really at all. Another great British band that I started to listen, getting into last night, hadn't played them in a while, was Wire. And what started it was seeing this online in the group, Colin Newman's, I think, second um, or third solo album, Not Two, on 4AD. Hadn't played it for a long time. This came out way back in 1982. Man, this is good. Every song. And it's like... You know, it's like kind of hard to gauge what is he about? What is this about? None of the words really make any sense. And it does not follow any set trajectory of rock and roll. It's a sound unto itself. Wire are very original. And Colin Newman has a lot to do with it. It's a great album. I really got into that. And so I pulled some singles to play and... The ones that got played, I'll show my pile. I have a few, but I played this B.C. Gilbert, um, Graham Lewis single. Enigmatic is the way that I put it. Ends with the sea and hung up to dry whilst building an arch. Again, a sound that when I heard it, it's like, I don't, I've never heard anything like this before. I love it. it was, it's very intriguing. This one is worth showing all the way because it's um, the infamous white white vinyl what, outdoor miner from uh, Chairs Missing. Wire were, were incredibly um, powerful from the beginning. Pink Flag still have it. I have a replacement. I bought it when it came out. My band Digital Sex, we played several songs by Wire. Um, Sand in My Joints, and some others. This is a brilliant single. I think it's a classic map reference. Um, uh, 41 degrees north, 93 degrees west. Brilliant. Brilliant. Where did they come up with this sound? I've watched several... Um, Interviews over the years with the band, I still have don't have a clue. They never, they don't really give it away where this music came from, except that they were in art school. Dot dash. <laughs> it's upside down. Cool single. It wasn't on an album when it came out originally. It's probably, I probably have it on a comp now or something, you know, box set they put out. Here's another just brilliant single. Our Swimmer. This is one where it's just, it's real simple, but it's just like, it's just, you know, just want to just keep hearing it, you know. It's really cool. I didn't play these, but I have these Colin Newman solo singles. Um, what is this one? Former Airline? No, no. Or is this Wire? Yeah, this is Wire. <laughs> Another one. A Question of Degree. Another great song. And, um... Interesting again, the band, how they you have this kind of arty, not so much punk, but artistic approach to their music and the way they would present it to you with the, the, the graphics and stuff. Feigned Hearing by Colin Newman. This is a very good album that it came from. On Cram Disc, Commercial Suicide. And then these, these two. B. And what's this one? Inventory. It's like inventory. Yeah. Love this sort of stuff. And then I have this reflex plexi disc. Colin Newman on one side and Devo on the other. I was also kind of uh, bantering with Tim Guthrie online a bit last night too. 
because I was he was responding to the the wire singles. Um, this is a great hobby, it really is, and um, sharing, posting online uh, in the record collecting groups is fun, and it's a real sense of um, union and camaraderie that I feel and I get from other collectors when we post records that we like, so that we have in common. People post stuff that I don't have, that I wish I had, or I'd never seen. This is a great pastime, and it's a very enjoyable way to be on the internet for me. Okay, I can spend you know a half a day online in the music groups if, if nothing else is going on, and enjoy it very much. I forget who sent someone. I forget who sent this to me. I think possibly Rebecca. Dextro. I had heard of this artist, but I had never heard his records. In the Crossing. It's um, ambient and also kind of um, motoric and really good. Um, it does... That graphic is a good indication. There's openness... There's flow, there's texture. It's really good. She gave me another one by Dextro. I haven't listened to that one again, but I pulled this. It just was um, next to the, um, was in the D's, as you saw it in the D's. Pulled this because I had been um, listening to Cocteau Twins, and um, Robin Guthrie had this project, Violet Indiana. Roulette with this singer, Siobhan, whatever. And I hadn't played it in a while because my memory of it was like, well, I never got into this. And when I put it on, sure enough, there's why. The music is gorgeous. It really is. But the singer is attempting to, they're trying, it's like she's trying to be uh, the singer from Portis Head and her voice isn't up to it. And so it's like it's a, it's like a second rate Portis Head with Robin Guthrie's music and it's like this ain't take the take the take the vocals off and we're in business is what I gotta say about this. Too many records to me have been ruined by shit vocals. Hadn't played this forever. Vroom by King Crimson. Love the spirit of the band. This one is autographed. Now, what's interesting about the autographs is that it's autographed by Tony Levin, who was in King Crimson, and Jerry Murata, who was not. Jerry Murata played drums with Peter Gabriel for a long time, and he was in Tony Levin's band. So one time when the Tony Levin band came to Omaha, I went to see the show, went with some friends, my friend Rich Madsen, rest in peace. He took this CD. This was, was his CD. He took it to the show with the idea of getting it autographed, and he did. And um, Jerry was, these guys were very cool. We hung out with him for about an hour after the show, seriously, a long time. And Jerry was happy to resign this for um, my friend Rich, even though he's not on the CD. That was really a fun, uh, that was a fun encounter with musicians. And then I have a picture of me and Tony Levin where we're, you know, bald-headed brothers, kind of, you know, needling each other about that. That was good memories. The Wake on Sarah. Sarah Records is a label out of England, small, associated with Twee and Emo. I ended up with a, 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 a stack of Sarah singles through my Japanese friends, and I fell in love with them. I love this music. I love the band Wake. There was a documentary that was made about the label Sarah. They caught wind of me reviewing them on my channel and asked to use footage from my channel in the documentary, and it is. I'll have to see if I can find a link to it. But this is a great band. They were also on Factory. It's a simple kind of sound, like new, like the original New Order in a way. It's just something captivating about it. The simplicity and the directness of it. The sound of the, the band and the songs themselves, I really like it a lot. 
a whole lot. I know what I like. Let's keep going. A few more things here. So, I have not met Leonardo Pogovic. I think that's how you say his name. The guy who owns Moon June Records and is um, manager. He manages uh, Tony Levin, Percy Jones. That's someone that I'm um, attempting to get in touch, touch with to do um, a Zoom with. And several other soft machine people. He is keeping that legacy alive through his management, excuse me, and his label. But he's also a world traveler and connected with fantastic musicians all over the planet. He sent me a package a few years ago of, of stuff. And this was an art, artist he sent me who I had never heard. The Wiki Dharmawan from Indonesia. And this is called Ruma Batu. Ruma Batu. This is excellent. This is a wonderful blend of Indonesian music, tradition, ambient, and fusion. This is real good. There's parts where the um, the fusiony rip, rips and licks remind me of El Demiola, El Demiola era of Return to Forever. This is really good. Cool cover too. Dwiki Dharma one. And I wanted to thank Leonard for just becoming a friend. You know, it's like um, out of the blue he contacted me years ago, noticing my collection online and said, "You have records I don't see anyone." I'm trying to. I can imagine his uh, accent. You show these records no one else shows, you know. I must, <laughs> we must meet someday. I hope I do. Almost done here. Now here's one I bought during COVID. Because during COVID I did some online ordering. Because of COVID. Because I don't like to order online. And it's one that I picked up. Dominic Blanc Francard, Allure. It was a cover that I was familiar with and had read about, forgot. When I first got this, my cursory first listen was I didn't really pay attention real good and I didn't didn't think it was very good. I was wrong. I didn't listen. I was it was the beginning song. It was the introduction I didn't get past. This is real good, and it has elements of Pink Floyd, Gong, um, straight rock and roll, and just um spacey madness. This is really good. I was pleasantly surprised how I had missed it the first time around. And I'm on the John Hassel hag jag as well. Rest in peace. His last couple albums, listening, listening to pictures and something about sound, these are incredibly brilliant. And again, something unique into itself. There's no other music that sounds like this. There's people that are using his techniques but they're not where he is. What do they call this? Fourth world? Literally, it's music of a place of its own. John Hassel. So, that's what I want to share. I always feel like I'm forgetting something. And yet, it's not in my... Um, I've never been one to write things down. And so, I still don't write them down. If they come up, they come up. If they don't, they don't. So... Make it good, people. Make it good, and as always, let me know what you think.